And then, as I was nearing the end of my research, my life changed drastically. One day, four men from Iran's intelligence ministry came to my apartment in Tehran and took me away, eventually to this place, Evin Prison, which is the most notorious prison in Iran where many political prisoners are held. Can you guess or do you know what kinds of prisoners those might be? Political prisoners, opposition figures, student activists, people your age, if they were criticizing the government or taking part in demonstrations that were not allowed. There were bloggers, there are journalists, there are attorneys who are brave enough to defend those other people who get thrown in jail. Sometimes they get put in jail themselves. I had heard before I went there stories about torture. I had heard about people going missing. And I had heard about Zahra Kazemi, who is an Iranian-Canadian journalist, photojournalist, who was jailed there. She was held there in 2003. And after some days, she died mysteriously. And no one had been held accountable for her death. So I was terrified. Well, I'm not going to go too much into the prison story here, except to say that um, I was accused of being a spy for the CIA. My captors said I was interviewing too many people to be writing a book about Iran. The book must be a cover for espionage for the CIA, they said. Somebody is paying you to pretend to write a book while you really are spying on Iran. And they said, unless you confess to being a spy and ask for forgiveness and agree to spy for us, we won't set you free. But if you confess and agree to spy for us and ask for forgiveness, we will let you go soon. They said, if not, you could stay here for 10, 20 years until you're an old lady. If you know what you're going to look like then, you're not going to be young anymore. I was terrified, and I didn't know what to do. It's a very, a very difficult situation, and um, many other people have, have gone through the same thing. Uh, many Iranians, and um, some have suffered much, much more than I ever did. I was really lucky because after um, some weeks, people on the outside found out where I was, and I later learned that they started calling for my freedom. These are some students at um, Northwestern University, students and faculty, because uh, I went to Northwestern for grad school. And after 100 days, even though I had been sentenced to eight years in prison, um, I, my sentence was reduced and I was let free. And here I am in front of my apartment in Tehran saying thank you to journalists and, and others. Um, and I came back to the United States, got involved in some human rights work, uh, freelancing, wrote a book, um, not the one I was planning in the fir first place, but the one about prison. Uh, and I guess that's something I can thank my captors for. That they changed the subject of the book completely. Um, and now I work at Al Jazeera America. And I've been there since last year in July. We launched in August. And I really enjoy it. I, um, we work with wonderful people. And, and I feel like I'm, I'm really blessed and lucky to, um, to be in this profession and to be free. It's... Um, something I don't think I ever really understood the value of before I was in prison, uh, to be free and not, I'm not just saying to be free to hold a rally or, or free to, you know, form a political party. I mean, just free to, to write as I wish, to surf the internet, um, to talk on the telephone without being monitored, to even just talk on the telephone <laughs> is a freedom because when you're in, in prison, you, can't always talk on the phone. The freedom to walk down the street, breathe fresh air, turn off the lights at night, not to wear a handcuffs or a blindfold. Um, to be free as a journalist is also an amazing freedom. To not fear that you're going to be put in jail if you are writing the truth. 